Hey folks, my name is Nico. I work on the AI SDK at Vercel. And today I want to walk you through our latest template that allows you to talk to your Postgres SQL database. So let's get into the demo. What we've got here is the app where you can find it at natural-language-postgres.vercel.app. Uh, we've got an input field where we can ask about startup unicorns um, and then a bunch of suggested queries. Now, before we get into actually using this, what is the data set in our Postgres SQL database? Well, I've pulled in uh, CB Insights complete list of unicorn companies. A unicorn company is a company valued at over a billion dollars. Uh, and in here, there are 1,248 rows. And across each of these rows, we've got things like valuation, the date they've joined, i.e. the date they became a unicorn, uh, the country and city they're from, the industry they operate in, as well as a select group of investors in a comma separated list. So that's in our Postgres database. And this allows us to really ask any question about that information that we want. Now, rather than asking a question first, I'm just going to try some of these suggested queries, like compare the count of unicorns in San Francisco and New York over time. So what's happening here is that the model is first generating a SQL query, then it's running that SQL query against our database. It generates this SQL query here. Uh, these are the results from that query. And then we're asking the model to generate a, a chart that would best visually represent the user's query. So here we can see a, a chart that shows us over time on the x-axis we have uh, the uh, the years. And on the y-axis, we have the count of unicorns. We've got a title, unicorn count in San Francisco versus New York over time. We can hover this and see this awesome Shatzian chart showing us the actual count per year for both cities. Uh, and then we have a description. The model generates a description. This line chart compares the count of unicorns, blah, blah, blah. And then really cool, we've got a takeaway. San Francisco generally has a higher count of unicorns compared to New York over the years, with both cities experiencing significant growth in and around 2020 and 2021. Really, really cool stuff. But my favorite feature of this application is an ability to ask the model to explain the SQL query that it generated. So if we click this question mark button here, what we're doing is we're sending the model the initial natural language query as well as the SQL query itself. And we say, can you break this down into sections and explain each part? And the interface here is really cool. So we can hover over a piece and see a description for that piece. So in this case, this part of the query selects the year from the date join column, the city column, and counts the number of unicorns for each combination of year and city. Extract year from date join, extracts a year from the date when each unicorn joined, blah, 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 blah. And you have this for each component of the query, which is really cool. And it's great for learning SQL as well to understand how and why the model is doing what it's doing. And at the end of the day, this is just an input box. So we could say, for example, uh, San Francisco, New York, and LA. And we'll see a query being generated. And you can see now we're pulling in Los Angeles as well. And we're seeing that in the data too. So this is really, really, really cool. And I, I love this project. And it's such a great use case for AI as well. So let's dive into the project and see how it works. I've got the project loaded in my editor here. It's a relatively simple project because there really is only one page of this application. It is a Next.js application. Uh, we're using ShadCN for our components. And then we're obviously using the AI SDK under the hood. Now, because we're using Next.js, we're taking advantage of server actions as our server-side environment for calling language models. Um, and that's in our actions.ts file, which we'll look at in a second. Um, if you've never come across server actions before, they're just server-side functions that you can call directly from the front end, giving you a really, really nice uh, developer experience. So in this project, we have the app directory, which has our root page, root layout, um, some CSS, our favicon, and then our actions. And then we have a components folder that has it within the UI, this is all of our, within the UI directory is all of our ShadCN components. And then we have a few custom components, which we won't look at today, but you can dive into as this project is fully open source. Finally, we have a lib directory. This has a utility function for formatting our charts, which we might look at a bit later. 
We've got some types. We've got a script for actually seeding the, the database. So when you run this at home on your own machine, you can do that with one command. And then finally, a few utils. I think that this is just the default ShadCN utilities. So let's start with the page, the root page where everything is happening. We're not going to dive into everything because there is a lot here and I want to keep this to be a short video. So we're going to focus our time on the handle submit function and everything that's going on in there. So handle submit is triggered when you click a suggestion or when you type a query and hit the send button. So what's happening here is this function is asynchronous. It takes in a suggestion, which is a type of string. This is optional. So the suggestion is literally any one of these buttons that you click. Otherwise, if you type your query, that will update the input value. Um, so in this way, we're saying if suggestion is defined, use that as our question. Otherwise, use the input value. Then we have a check to see if both of them are undefined. And if so, we exit the function. We then have a utility function to clear existing data. This is just for the UI to clear everything out. Uh, we then trim the, we, we use the dot trim function to check that this isn't just white space and assuming that that is defined after it's been trimmed, i.e. there are characters in the question. We then set submitted to true. We update our loading state to true. You would have seen when we were going through this process, we see we've got an initial generating SQL query, then running SQL query. So it's a multi-step loading process. And so we set the loading state to one, and then we set the active query. The active query is the SQL query being generated to just a blank string. Now, here is our first use of AI and our first server action. So we get our, our query by calling the generate query function and passing in our question. So let's take a look at this generate query function. This is in our actions.ts file. And what it is here is it's an asynchronous function. It takes in an input, which is type string, and has first the use server directive to communicate that this is a server action. Then within a try block, we call the generate object function from the AI SDK. Now generate object is doing exactly what it says on the tin. It generates an object using a language model. The first thing that we do here is specify the model that we want to use for this project. We're using OpenAI's GPT-4.0. If you want to use Anthropic or any other model, the SDK provides a unified API. So all you'd have to do here is change out your model and your model ID, and you'd have the same AI logic just going to a different model. Super powerful, super cool. Now, probably the biggest part of this project was not actually architecting these calls to the model, but actually engineering the prompt to work well and to work consistently. We have an associated guide to this template, and it goes into a lot of the nuances around actually engineering this prompt, what we're talking about. So we'll go over things high level. And if you want more details, I'd suggest you check that out. But roughly what we have here is a system prompt that tells the model uh, that they are a SQL expert. We specify that this is Postgres here. Um, and we also tell it its job. We say that your job is to help the user write a SQL query. Now, the first thing that we do is we actually pass both the table name as well as the schema of this table to give the model all the context it needs to generate a query. And then we provide some more nuanced uh, advice or direction. So things like you can only do select queries. In our case, I didn't want and we didn't want people to be able to add information using that input box. We have things like make sure that you're using is like and lowercase to ensure that we're not running into issues where Los Angeles, for example, or San Francisco would be lowercase in the user's query and sentence case in the database. We also give some more context like select investor is a comma separated list of investors. We provide the model. It in the schema, we don't actually constrain any of the columns for industries. So we give the model all of the available industries. We also ask, and, and this is another nuanced but important part, we say that if the category doesn't exist in the list, infer it based on the list above. So if the user asked, for example, for fintech companies, it could go through here and say financial services is most likely what the user is looking for. There are a few formatting things here. So 
for example, if the, the user asked for companies worth more than $10 billion, the model needs to know what, how to format that query when it's generated. So it wouldn't write out 10 billion, it would write out 10.0. This is another interesting thing that came over time was if the user asks over time, which is what we would say in natural language, we want to return it by year rather than return it by date, which would be the default way that the model does. And then the last two points, one, if you're asking for the UK or USA, actually write those things out because that's how it is in the database. And then this is interesting as we go into the chart configuration generation is that every query should be quantitative data that can be plotted on a chart. Now, if you play around with this, you, you may be able to see why, but when you're returning a query, it's not guaranteed that that's going to be plottable on a chart. So this was something that I found helped for making sure that it was plottable. And then finally, we get to the prompt, generate the query necessary to retrieve the data the user wants. And this is their input, their natural language input. Now, I said that this was using generate object to generate a structured response. The reason we're doing this here is if we use something like generate text or just ask the model to respond with text, it's likely that they would, in some cases, respond, here you go, or things like that. And in this case, we restrict the model to say, OK, you should just return a structured object that has a query key and that query is a string. And in this case, every single time, we know that that query string, that structured object, is just going to have the query and nothing else. So that's really helpful for actually using it in our UI. So we go back to our page. That will return our query. We say if the query is, is undefined, which occasionally can happen, this was happening more in cases of rate limiting or, or random issues, you throw an error and you set your loading state to false and you return from the function. We then set our query to being the active query. So that's that, if we go back here, that's our active query right here. And that will update the UI. So then this active query will be set within this component. And then we're now in loading step two because we're not generating the query anymore or we don't need to generate the query anymore. In this case, we actually need to run that generated SQL query. So we have just a very simple function here called run generate SQL query. And this is asynchronous, takes in a query, which is a string. Again, use server directive to communicate that this is a server action. We then have this kind of long if statement to check that nobody's trying to escape or, or prompt engineer their way to doing something malicious to our database. So we're checking if any of these keywords exist or if it doesn't start with select, in which case we throw a new error. Otherwise, we can actually run the query and return the resulting rows as a result. Awesome. So once we have that result, we can actually pull out the columns from the, the first row, the keys of the first row. We're able to set the results to those companies that were returned, as well as the columns. And this is, again, a, a bit of a nuanced point, but we don't know what columns are going to be returned because with SQL, you could generate a query to get count or you could generate a query to, to do any sort of thing. And so in this way, we're able to have that dynamic table with dynamic columns. Um, so we're now on to our next usage of AI, and this is generating chart config. So in this project, we're using Shatsy and Charts, which uses ReChart under the hood. And you can use with rechart a, a config object to be able to specify things like the x-axis, the y-axis, what kind of chart it should be, whether it's a pie chart, bar chart, line chart, and so on. And we can't just pass in the data and expect the, the chart to be able to generate it all on its own. So this is a really great use case for AI in that we can send the question, the query, alongside the data that's actually returned and say, can you generate a, a configuration object that matches this schema that best represents the data? And that's what we have and what we're doing here. So if we head to the action, you can see we're passing in the results and we're passing in the user's query as well. Uh, we have a system prompt. This probably should be defined in line, but we're saying you're a data visualization expert. And then like our previous generate object file, 
we specify our model, we pass in the system prompt. And in this case, this, the, the prompt that we give is, given the following data from a SQL query result, generate the chart config that best visualizes the data and answers the user's question. And so we pass in an example chart config, give them the user's query, give them the data in a stringified format, and then we have a config schema in our types to, to, to constrain what exactly we want back from the model. And there are a few interesting prompt engineering tips here. So we have the things that you would expect, like the title, the type, uh, the X key, Y keys, whether it's multiple line, different categories for the line, colors, legends, so on. But I've also added description and takeaway. And interestingly, or of note, I've put them at the top of our schema. And the reason you do this is because the model will go through and generate these in a, in a linear format. And by putting both the description and the takeaway at the beginning, you force the model to first generate those. And then when it goes through and generates all of the other important pieces, like the title, like the keys and things like that, it's drawing on the description and the takeaways that it's generated before. So you get much, much better generations as a result. Uh, so that returns a, a config object that's fully typed. And we go through and we set the, the colors just to be uh, according to our Shadsian theme. And then we return that updated configuration. So we can now go back into the page and update the chart config. So great, that's our handle submit. So we've now covered two of the AI actions here. The last AI action that we're gonna cover is the actual explaining of the SQL query. And that is happening in our query viewer component. And here we've got like the other, like the root page, we've got a handle submit function. And in this case, it's handle explain query. We manage some loading state, and then we call this explain query action, passing in the input value being the question, and then the active query as well. So if we go to that action, again, you'll see that most of the focus here is spent on the system prompt as well as the, the prompt that we have here. So. What we've got here is we tell the model, it's a Postgres SQL expert. You need to explain the user's SQL query based on what they've asked for. So we've given the columns. So the model now knows what it has available to it. And then we say, when you explain, you must take a section of the query and then explain it. Each section should be unique. So in a query like select star from unicorns limit 20, the sections could be select star uh, from unicorns and limit 20. This is, again, another important thing to note when you're engineering is by providing an example, we are much more likely to get the model to do what we want it to do. Finally, uh, we have the prompt where we actually say explain the SQL query and we pass in the user's query and the generated SQL query as well. Uh, and the schema here is very simple, is each explanation has a section, which is a string, that it's referring to, and then the explanation, which is a string as well. And that's how this all works under the hood. So if we run this query again, compare count of unicorns, you can see when we click this button, what's gonna happen under the hood is the model is gonna break down this query into each of the relevant sections and then generate its explanation. And we're just gonna match that together in the, in the component. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this very quick walkthrough of the natural language PostgreSQL project. We also have an associated guide alongside this project. So if you wanna go through and actually build this yourself, uh, I highly suggest going through here. We walk through going from none of these AI features to implementing each. We talk through the nuances of engineering the prompt as well as how we're working with these uh, AI SDK functions. If you have any questions, please uh, find me on Twitter. I'm on uh, Nico Albanese 10. I keep writing Twitter. I know it's X. Here we are. So if you have any questions, just send me a DM. And otherwise, yeah, can't wait to see what you build with this.